Okay, we're back. Digging into the infrastructure to make hybrid work possible. High performance, cost effective, scalable, and secure. That's what it's all about. So far, we've covered the rapid migration to Wi-Fi 6E technology and the role that switching is going to play. And now we're going to get into private 5G. And to do that, let's welcome Masu Mir, who is Vice President and General Manager of Mobile, Cable, and the IoT business at Cisco. And Greg Dorai, who is the Vice President of Product Management for the Networking Experiences Group at Cisco. He's responsible for Catalyst Access, that whole portfolio, Enterprise 5G, Cisco DNA spaces, Cisco ISE, uh, a lot of stuff there, uh, Greg. Uh, and gentlemen, welcome. Dave, thank you for having us. Yeah, our pleasure. Masoom, let's start with you on the topic of private 5G. 5G. What, what do we need to know about that? And more specifically, you know, what's unique about Cisco's private 5G? So most importantly, delivering private 5G in enterprise terms. That's super important to look at 5G. Many of our peer groups might have got it wrong. We're looking at private 5G with the lens of enterprise, what enterprise really needs. Is 5G going to come and displace a lot of existing technology or is it going to help augment the technology that enterprise has and accelerate their digitization journey? I wanted to start, Dave, with the basic premise of hybrid work and what hybrid work really means. Is it only for knowledge worker or is it for all workers? So we strongly believe hybrid work needs to empower all workers. It's not only connecting remote workers, but also bringing people, things, and space together. And we strongly believe the combination of Wi-Fi 6 and 5G for private network is going to accelerate that journey, bringing people, things, and space together in a very, very cohesive way. Why our offer is so unique, we are going to create a continuum. Enterprises don't have to make a hard choice. They will be using Wi-Fi technology and 5G technology hand in hand without creating a disruption on their policy and identity systems. They don't have to rethink, do I have to go and build a new backbone? It's a common backbone that will support both Wi-Fi as well as 5G. Most importantly, delivering this entire offer as a service with the ease of consumption, ease of operation, and a trusted environment that they can put their mission critical workload on. I like it. So a couple of takeaways there. I mean, it's inclusive of all workers, not just knowledge workers, non-disruptive. Everybody loves to hear that. And of course, the as a service model is key. Masoom, let me stay with you. I mean, we can't wait for 5G, right? It's lightning fast. It's got super low latency, very high bandwidth. So that's what everybody's excited about. The question though is, is, is 5G gets introduced, you know, it's going to power things like IOT networks. Is that going to replace Wi-Fi and legacy wired broadband? Absolutely not. So we see private 5G as an augmentation to the enterprise on top of Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi, as you heard in the previous conversation, Wi-Fi is bringing more capability with Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 6E, and 5G is going to be yet another augmentation. Wi-Fi and 5G will coexist within enterprise for many years to come. I would like my friend Greg to talk a little bit about this continuum, Greg. Yeah, I think it's sort of like, I like to say it's an and, not an or, uh, because there's enough use cases out there which require Spectrum. And, you know, Spectrum is a constraint. So you have private 5G, your Wi-Fi 6, and both offer opportunities. So for example, in an indoor carpeted setting where you're basically connecting your phone for basic browsing or connecting your laptop, Wi-Fi is sufficient. But if it's a process automation, uh, factory where you need seven nines of reliability, private 5G is the better technology. Similarly, outdoor large areas, it's probably private 5G, right? Like, because you can have easy handoff between public and private. So it's use case driven. And once it's use case driven, it's going to be an R because there's so many next gen use cases, whether it's AR, VR, drones, self-driving cars, you name it, right? Like, and so I think these two technologies, 5G and Wi-Fi 6C is going to work hand in hand to deliver awesome outcomes for our customers. Yeah, and the, just the data volumes are going to be incredible. We always talk about the data volumes, but you ain't seen nothing yet is what I always say. But the thing is every new tech that's introduced into the enterprise, you can almost be certain that it's going to bring adoption challenges. And not only that, it, tip, it also is going to bring 
changes in the way you do things, and that brings new complexities from an operational standpoint. So my question is, how are you addressing this with the introduction of 5G? Dave, this is a fantastic question, and this is where we have spent, me and Greg have spent tremendous amount of time to create continuum. I'll start with the foundation first, backbone. So we have been building this enterprise backbone supporting what wired connection as well as Wi-Fi connection. We wanted to make sure that as private 5G comes within enterprise, you don't have to rethink and reimagine your backbone. It's the common backbone that will support both Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi 6, Wi-Fi 6E, as well as private 5G. You rest assured that it is the same backbone that we have heard in the previous section on the CAT 9K that will also support a private 5G access. The second aspect of private 5G is as you build any new technology into enterprise, oftentimes we get into this trap. To get to an outcome, we move fast and we create a silo. And then that silo operation creates barriers to mainstream it. So upfront, we have to think about not creating another silo and how we are doing it. Number one is a device that can connect into Wi-Fi network or a private 5G network. You don't have to reimagine or rethink how I'm going to manage the identity. We'll create continuity of the common identity across the Wi-Fi access or 5G access in the same environment. The second aspect of that is how are we going to retain all our staff? Our enterprise staff is well-trained with Wi-Fi technology and wired technology. Now 5G comes with tremendous amount of value and benefit, but it also comes with inherent technology complexity, learning curve problem. This is where our simple to consume, simple to cons uh, operate model of SaaS comes to play. That we're going to take all those complexity away. It is a cloud delivered service, so enterprise don't have to go through this massive learning curve adopting this technology. Last but not least, on how you're going to manage your capital. Any new technology in enterprise, oftentimes you need a huge amount of upfront investment to adopt the technology to get to the other side of getting the outcome. So again, our business model of SaaS will allow enterprise to adopt this new technology and pay as you grow model to, to meet with enterprise needs. Finally, I also wanted to pass to Greg to touch a little bit more on how we are thinking about this common identity across any access in the enterprise. Greg, to you. So we, have, we thought about it in two different ways. One is, a lot of enterprises today use our identity uh, and secure uh, management platform. We call it ICE, Cisco ICE platform. And so years and years of policy and identities, access servers, radio servers they use, uh, et cetera, uh, are plugged in already into our eyes, right? So if we can share that with this private 5G as a service uh, infrastructure that Masoom has been building, we think we'll be able to create that bridge because we are not forcing enterprises to create new identities or new policies. So that's sort of step one to make it easier. Uh, we also thought through something where in the case of a public 5G network, for example, the, the, it's very convenient because you take your phone out of your pocket and it's connected to the network, right? Versus for Wi-Fi, you have to log into an SSID in your hotel or in your home, and in home it's automatic, uh, but that's that login process that creates friction. And that's a problem because then you can't be seamless. So we initiated what we call as open roaming, uh, right? Like that's a, a identity federation that we first created between identity owners, could be carriers, could be um, anything, right? Anyone who owns an identity and they will share with venues. And so if the sharing happens, then that onboarding can be automatic. And once onboarding is automatic, then it's easy to pass off between Wi-Fi and 5G. And so that's, again, another way in which you can lower the adoption barriers as you share across public, private, 5G, and Wi-Fi networks. So these are two concrete examples of uh, how we thought about lowering the barriers of adoption as we enter into this heterogeneous uh, world. Nice, I can't wait. Uh, it, let's, let's talk about how this thing scales in, in the go-to-market. What are the most likely or maybe preferred or obvious routes to market for, for private 5G, 5G from Cisco? So Dave, stay tuned, we're going to announce more about it, but I, I can also assure you that access to the spectrum is a challenge for many enterprises when it comes to cellular technology. Uh, in some countries, there are more spectrum accessible by enterprise. In many countries, that's not the case. So we have thought through very carefully that how do we bring this offer to the market, partnering with managed service providers and mobile operators. 
where in countries where you don't have direct access to the spectrum, our partnership with mobile operators that you will hear more about as we come to Mobile World Congress is going to allow our enterprise to consume this technology even if they don't have the spectrum. In places where the enterprise might have direct uh, spectrum access, we'll also bring in our managed service providers to hide the complexity of the new technology. On top of our SaaS services or cloud delivered services, this is the augmentation with the partnership with managed service providers and mobile operators that will ease this journey for enterprises. Our most important primitive in this journey is to keep it simple for enterprise, make it intuitive and trust it from day one. Outstanding. Okay, Masoom, Greg, thanks so much. It was great to have you guys on. I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you.